Well, my background is actually in engineering and the sound arts. So because kind of a sound arts and sound design kind of there, they have a lot of overlap with technologists. So obviously you use software and as well as to make interactive sound installations, you use difficult, uh, different sort of uh, hardware as well. So that's what I did as part of my Sonic Arts degree. And then I was commissioned as a freelance sound artist to do a interactive installation for a children's sensory garden. And that involved loads of kind of computing and physical computing. And I did lots of research around this sort of thing area about, you know, what, how kids interact with sound and sort of a technology in between ages of two and four. And a friend of mine who was already doing a PhD at Queen Mary University of London told me that yeah, that's really interesting research. I should put a proposal forward and see if I can go and do a PhD in the area. So this is how, how I actually ended up from engineering and sound arts into computer science now. There is, there is, uh, everybody says there's half population of the world are women and uh, if we are designing things for other women I think we need to kind of have women to design, not just for other women but for all genders. So you might have some sort of issues that, you, that are different to yourself. I mean I've experienced that in my own research because I do research with families and primary school kids. And so I sort of go in to do user research and interviews with families to see how they communicate uh, uh, using technology and how they share their experiences. And when I was talking to mums per se, it would always be the same old story sort of thing. They will have used the hand-me-down phone from their son or from the from the uh, husband, etc. That they couldn't. They will take loads of pictures of the kids because they like that's what they like to do, but then they were unable to kind of put them on a computer because they didn't even know how, or they lost a cable, and there was kind of this sort of a barrier. So even sort of a, for that population, knowing kind of thing how to use the technology on a simple kind of terms if you're a mom, not if you're working in IT industry, it sort of goes across the board. Perhaps in a sort of a more male-dominated environment, maybe you don't feel as, as supportive, supportive sort of thing, uh, and perhaps, um, I, I guess, you know, women like to share things, I, at the moment I'm running this uh, girls hacking club called G-Hack at Queen Mary's University of London and we all, a whole bunch of girls, we all doing PhDs in computer science and we come from different fields, some, some from psychology, arts, some from engineering, sound arts, etc. And you kind of have, everybody's got their own different take on things, but they all don't think of themselves as sort of a women, you know, technologists first and women afterwards, etc. They just kind of think, say to themselves, okay, this is a problem I want to solve, this is how I do it. But, but uh, of course, maybe we are just a small group that is kind of uh, resurfaced with these kind of ideas and perhaps by kind of a showing uh, uh, to a, a much wider population that actually these women exist and uh, you know, they're from all over the world and this is, sort of a, this is something that you can also be doing, you just kind of need to know where to go to do it in a way. So I, I've sort of experienced when I, when I did some lectures and talks to a younger group of kids, for instance, they were just thinking about what sort of subjects they were going to choose in university. And I was kind of saying to them, this is what we do. So showing like, let's just say example of interactive installations that we did with GHAC, this is how it works. And then we open up a box and this is, you have your software, you have your hardware, cameras, etc. And they were all kind of peeking in and really getting interested in it. But when I talk, start talking about the software, they don't know what the, what the software is. And when I ask them what software they use, they were like, oh, we use Word, okay. So, so in a way, they don't kind of connect in a way how they can make something with the Word spreadsheets because they can't to make an installation like this. And then when I told them, so okay, so who here knows about Facebook, SoundCloud, etc. They all kind of, you know, raise their hands. And I said, well, do you know what these guys actually do? So they, they do, do not connect anything that they learn in school, specifically maths and physics, to any kind of job making any kind of technology that they actually enjoy using. And I think this is kind of the biggest it's not just it's across genders it's not just uh, talking about young women and young men it's just basically the, the fact that they don't know that what they do is relevant and we should do more about kind of showing them you are learning this because then later on you're going to be writing some code and using these, this algorithm to make some music information retrieval system that's going to be then used in last fm spotify itunes etc etc and all this software so there's a big disconnect about this using technology and making technology are two different things. Mm -hmm. So I think at the moment, the, the younger generation, we need to sort of uh, uh, show them that actually, what, what does it mean to make technology? And the generation which is sort of not really interested in making technology or their completely different career trajectory, we need to actually upskill them so they're confident in using technology. Well, I would say if you're starting a career in IT or computer science, if you're just graduating, you should be looking to join the professional organizations like BCSs. 
For instance, at the moment within BCS and, and within a specialist group, BCS Women, we are working on the mentoring program, mentoring framework. And of course, it's going to be particularly important for the new graduates who have never worked in the industry. And of course, we hear all these sort of reports about the graduates graduate, but we, they are unemployable because they don't have the skills. So the mentoring is going to become particularly important to get those graduates from graduation through the doors, first doors, then the second doors, etc. in their career trajectory. So I would say find an organization that's affiliated to what you're planning to do, whether it's engineering, whether it's uh, computer science, of course you have BCS and BCS women, join those organizations and use those opportunities.